Will this copper pocket pen pull me away from Kaveco? When I hear the words pocket pen, the first thing I think of is Kaveco. To me, that brand has the corner on the petite pen market. So when the Pocket 6 from Shown Design came out a couple years ago, and people kept talking about it, I knew that I would probably get around to reviewing one at one point or another, or at least when my budget and pocket pen buying needs aligned. Long and short of it, those moments still haven't aligned, but thanks to Phil, I have a copper-colored aluminum pocket pen to try with a custom selvage grind from Nib Taylor. And who knows, maybe after this trial run, I may have to go over to the Shown Design website and pick one up. There are definitely a few variants to choose from. So let's get to the pen and see if you're going to want to do the same. If you saw my review on the Monarch nib and the pen that came with it, then you know my thoughts on the packaging involved here. If you haven't seen that video, go watch that one really quick and then come back to this one. Long and short of it, this packaging is by far my favorite from every pen I've bought or tried, and I much prefer the cylindrical packaging when compared to anything with corners, as this has a much better chance of protecting what's inside than something with corners that can create an easy weak point. A few things I will stress again in this video though, when you unbox the pen, be careful when putting the orange part back into the black sleeve as you may not be able to get it back out. The second part, and I actually glossed over this in the other shown video, the pen guy mascot reminds me of Clippy for some reason. On a few of the typos I had when writing this script, I was half expecting this guy to pop up from the corner to ask me if I needed some help with typing this thing out. That would actually be pretty funny. Some programmer in the pen community actually needs to make a plugin for Google Docs that can do just that. Moving on from the untubing to the pen itself, it's definitely a pocket pen. And if it wasn't for the threading on one end, I would have a hard time identifying which end was which. That actually brings up another showing of good craftsmanship. When I first saw this pen, I would have said that this ridge marked where the cap would unscrew from the body, but I was wrong. The separation point is actually towards the posting threads. Speaking of which, this cap posts quite nicely and does a good job making this a normal length pen. And I think this is going to be a necessity as without posting, this pen is short. Even with this well-designed machined section, this is a super short pen that really lives up to pocket. And it is this pen that houses a Bach nib that for once doesn't give me a bad writing experience out of the box, though that could be the custom medium selvage grind that you'll see in action a little later. Now, with a pen this short, I'm pretty sure you already know what we're going to find once we unscrew the section, but to reiterate, there is really only enough room for a short international cartridge in here. So if you want to ink up your favorite ink, like Orochizuku Shoro, you will need to use a standing cartridge and fill it via needle. It's a small hurdle, but one that you should be aware of. I would say to use a Kaveco plunger converter in here, but the cartridge is going to give you more capacity to play with, so it's just better to go that route. Speaking of Kaveco, let's take a look at the Pocket 6 next to a Kaveco Sport. Looking at these two capped, the Kaveco is 1.5 centimeters longer at 10.5 centimeters to the 9 centimeters of the Pocket 6, though the Pocket 6 is 6 grams heavier at 17 grams. Uncapped, there are two ways to look at this. When unposted, the Pocket 6 is still 1.5 centimeters shorter at 8.6 centimeters to the Kaveco's 10 centimeters. But when we post the Pocket 6, the pen is now slightly longer than the Kaveco at 13.2 centimeters versus the 13.1 centimeters of the posted Kaveco. Looking at true uncapped weight puts the Pocket 6 at 13 grams versus the 7 grams of the Kaveco Sport. And when we look at the sections, Though the shown is half a centimeter longer at two centimeters, the section is one millimeter thinner at the thinnest point, putting it halfway between the sport and the lilliput. And that brings us to the writing sample to see how this pocket pen stands up. This week, we are again finding ourselves in my Masubi Tomoe River paper notebook. I'm just gonna come out and say it. I cannot use this pen without posting it. There's no way around it. Without it being posted, the weight is just off and the pen is too short to make contact with the webbing between my thumb and my index that I need for a good writing experience. That said, once this pen is posted, I completely forgot that I'm using a pocket pen and this becomes a writing experience 
that is on par with the longer pens in my collection. And part of that, I think, is this selvage grind. Now, Phil is insistent that this is a medium nib, but personally, I feel it comes off as a fine nib. This is a smoothbok nib, though. On TR, it's gliding across the page and providing good flow from Shoro from start to finish. If this was a stock bok nib, I don't know if that would be the case, but with this tuned nib, it definitely is. And I think that's how I'll round out my experience with this pen. Since Shown Design no longer provides this pen with bok nibs, I can see this being an easy purchase. The posting experience makes writing very pleasant, and looking at the cost of a selvage grind, it looks like I can have a smooth writing, easy posting pocket pen with a custom grind for under $180 for the model I'm looking at. And that does it for our look at the Pocket 6 from Shown Design. If you liked that video or found it useful, then hit that like button, subscribe if you haven't, and I'll see you in the next one.